All right. So, the screw was loose on the on the connector to the to the tip. So as you can see, it actually works quite nicely now. So let's get back to it. May as well reapply the flux because it's dried by now. I can't really have too much of this. Stuff. Try this again, shall we? Lay it flat. Now you got to be careful when you're doing this. Um, never to let these, this part, this tip. Use the dial to point. Use let this overlap with this. All right, these two don't don't connect those two because then then you created that short. Uh, so don't let you have to be really careful of you know beads of solder like actually forming a connection up there. You don't want that to happen. Form it that short. So hopefully my soldering iron doesn't make a fool out of me again. Actually, let me bead some solder. Oh wow! All right, there we go. Let's go really good. So I'm actually going to beat it onto the tabbing wire first, just to get a little ball going. Okay, I got it on there. Yeah. I'm going to go straight across. Sorry. There we go. Got one guy down. Okay. As you can see that little bead that I started at the end, it kind of creates just a tiny wave of solder across the whole top of this, even though this has solder in it. But that little tiny bead that I added to the tip of the solder, uh, tip of the, the tabbing wire helps it travel all the way across and this gun it, it just gets so hot you just go straight across so I'm gonna, and as I get into the rhythm of it um, I'll be able to zoom down these really 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 fast so let me go ahead and cut another length two of these guys and then I'll go ahead and I'll also show you how to do it on the back Now again, I mean, I really, I really don't recommend using such a hot soldering iron because you can damage the cell uh, really easily. Um, but I, I like this soldering iron. Uh, I really didn't feel the need to buy, buy 40 or 60 watts. So I'm just gonna rock out with it. Hopefully, it doesn't come to bite me in the ass at the end. Um, but live and learn. Live and learn. Position that guy. Give me a little bit more flux on that. Too much flux. It's, it's pretty much stuck to it with the flux. Sticky flux. Let's go to roast for a minute. Looking good. So, I'm gonna flip them over. Okay. I'm gonna take 
this guy. Slide them under. Looks like I grabbed the length of tabbing wire. That was too short. It must have been a spare piece. I thought it was one that I cut earlier. No big deal. Um, just gonna add more time to it, but I'm just gonna rig it on there. I'll patch it up, but I'll go ahead and do this guy. And this piece on the bottom is a little bit too long. It's another thing you gotta watch out for. Let me zoom in. So you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay. So now we're looking at the tabbing wire from this piece to this piece. This piece right here. It's a little too long. And if you look at it, it's actually coming in contact with this piece. You don't want that to happen. So I'm going to have to snip this, and that's going to be a really delicate procedure. So somewhere around here, I have a razor blade. And I'm just going to take this razor blade and get this guy out of the way. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to take it. I'm just going to bend it up. Over, just like that. There you go. Crisis averted. It's basically the same procedure for the back, except on in this particular cell, there's only three points at which you have to make contact to the cell. Get your flux ready. To be quite honest, these these cell these cells in particular are, are quite the pain um, to get these things to stick to the back, and it is such a pain. I'm also working with a really tight tolerance. I I can hardly have any gap between the cells, or they they just won't fit in this box here. Okay. Position the camera a little bit. All right, there we go. So I'm going to form another bead of solder on the tip of my weller. Make sure the cells, the cells themselves aren't touching. Space them apart. I'm going to get my bead of solder going. Twist it a little bit. See, they they don't make the best the best joints. These guys. I'm not too impressed with the back of these cells, to be honest. But it'll work. Hopefully, it'll work. And go through. I'm gonna solder a couple of them together. I'm gonna run them, test them with a voltmeter, make sure it's continuous. Otherwise. Definitely seated well. They look pretty good to me. Alright, let me go ahead and fix this catastrophe. I guess just from here, I'll start from this side. Okay, I'll just tuck in on here. Yeah. 
I'm assuming that as I go on, I won't be making these mistakes. And these are probably mistakes that everybody makes when they first try this for the first time. So, at least you will not repeat my mistakes. And that is the purpose of the video. Not to repeat someone else's mistakes. And that's why you're here. Be a solder go around, and then I'm actually going to solder the, the the loose piece down first. I don't know if you could hear that. Oh, what's that? Nice. Such a pain. This is why you do it right the first time, folks. So comes quite the pain in the butt. I'm just touching it. scenario here. Libido. Looking ugly. Looking ugly. Catastrophe avoided. This is the primary concern is do not damage the cells. Do not damage the cells. There you go. This video should be titled, How NOT to Solder Solar Panels. That would make more sense. But, I got this section of three done, and then I'm going to set up tabbing wire for these, and I'm going to set these in there, and then I'm going to start another section of three. Alright, um, next video, hopefully there will be more progress. Uh, hopefully I won't have any major catastrophes burn the house down, break any cells. Um, but that would be just my luck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can see the rest of the process. And uh, thanks for stopping by.